All right, so this is just going to be a short follow-up to the Compact Flash Card and Floppy Emulator Upgrade video that I made a little over a week ago. So one of the issues that I ran into was that the sampler was unable to read either one of these drives. And um, it turned out that the issue was the way the Compact Flash Card adapter was jumpered. And let me show you what that looks like. So when you buy one of these adapters, you're going to notice that there are a set of pins on either side and has a set of jumpers. Now, depending on how it's jumpered, will dictate whether or not the sampler is able to recognize that they are there. So in my case, um, this adapter had the jumper settings set to the far right two pins on both sides. And all I had to do was just pull the jumper out and set them to the far left two pins. So this is pretty easy to do. You can use a pair of tweezers or you can use a pair of sausage fingers like mine. And then you can pull the jumper out and then set them up to the correct pins. And once they're set up correctly, all you got to do is place your adapter back in the IDE slot and from here you're ready to format the card. So let me show you what that looks like. So let's go ahead and turn on the unit. And at the moment you'll see a little progress icon. Uh, the reason for that is because currently I have this compact flash card mounted, meaning that every time I turn on the unit, it's going to take a moment to prepare the card so that it's able to read and write to the card. And uh, I prefer to have it set that way uh, because if I don't, um, I'm going to have to do that manually each and every time I turn on the unit. So my suggestion would be make sure that in the settings you set the mount uh, option for your compact flash card to on and uh, show you where that's at actually. So once you're there, hit disk, then F5. And as you can see right here, here's my compact flash card. Mount setting, set the on. And let's go ahead and format it. So a command, you're going to notice the option to format. Click go. And here you can use the default settings. Just make sure that format type is set to logical. And then if you cycle down under number of partitions, set that to eight. The reason I say that is because the A series samplers are only able to access eight gigabytes of memory at one gigabyte partitions. So, for example, if you were to buy a compact flash card that, say, had 16 gigabytes of memory, you're only going to be able to access 8 gigabytes of that card at 1 gigabyte partitions. Any more than that, um, it's just memory that's not going to be able to be accessible. So don't bother wasting your money on more memory. Just buy an 8 gigabyte card or less, and you should be good to go. So once you have your settings in place, all you got to do is click Execute. It's going to ask you, are you sure? Hit Yes. And from here, it's going to take a moment to format the card. And it does take a little bit of time. All right. And once that's done, you can exit out of the command menu. And you'll notice your partitions are ready to go. So there's eight partitions starting with zero. And that's it. You have a freshly formatted compact flash card that's ready for you to read and write to. All right, now in the case of the floppy emulator, there are a couple of jumper settings which are hard to see because the case is covering them. So I'm going to put a screen cap to show you what those uh, settings are. But what I want to point out is that there are a set of jumpers. There's a jumper similar to the one on the compact flash card that's right here. 
and then you have these single pin jumpers and there's four of them so the settings for these are I don't know if you can see the initial pins here but the settings for the white and blue is JA and the black and white is JC and then this jumper needs to be set to S1 so why that is I have no idea the gentleman that I bought the emulator from uh, gave me some instructions and he said to use S0 but that didn't work and I have a feeling it's because he's using his emulator on an A3000 now for the A5000 these are the settings that worked for me and I assume will work also on the A4000 since they're nearly identical samplers but uh, that's basically it so um, I hope you found the video helpful and uh, as always thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one take care